Today on the Ask BP podcast, we're answering the question, what websites should you use to look for properties? Stay tuned. You're listening to another Bigger Pockets Ask BP podcast, where you'll hear short, direct answers to your biggest real estate questions. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets forums by using hashtag AskBP. And don't forget to pick up your copy of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing and other great content when you sign up for your free account at biggerpockets.com. With that, let's get to the show. Hey everyone, this is the Ask BP Podcast. My name is Brandon. Super excited that you're here joining me today. Today we're talking about websites. What website should you use uh, to find good deals? And so that's what we're going to be covering. A couple quick house cleaning things first. Number one, I just want to thank everyone who's left a rating or review for the show. You guys rock. Uh, definitely picking those up pretty quickly. Uh, we've been ranked pretty high in iTunes, which is awesome, but I would love to get higher. So don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> get it? Higher. Anyway, uh, I really want to get higher in the rankings on iTunes. And so uh, the more ratings, reviews, and subscriptions uh, you can leave in, in iTunes, I mean, don't do multiple ones, but the more I get, the better it is. So uh, there's that. Uh, secondly, um, I don't know. I guess that's all I got for today. So that was my only thing. Uh, jump on Bigger Pockets. That's the second thing. If you're not hanging out on Bigger Pockets in the forums, you should probably do that. All right. To today's show. Today's show, we're talking about uh, the question comes from Jaron from San Francisco. And Jaron asks, What websites do you use to find properties for sale if you don't have access to the MLS? All right. So, first of all, let me explain what all that question means. So, uh, Jaron is asking, He is not a real estate agent which means he does not have direct access to the MLS. The MLS stands for the Multiple Listing Service. That is the collection of... Uh, the collection of listings or properties that are for sale by other real estate agents. So all the real estate agents get together and they put all their stuff in one location, sort of, that's a really simplified explanation, but, and they put it all in one location and other agents can go and find out uh, what is for sale and all the information. It's all kind of standardized. Now, in reality, there's multiple MLSs all over the country, uh, lots of them. And then we just kind of call it the MLS as one big thing, but it's it's really not. But uh, so if you are not a real estate agent, you do not have direct access to the MLS, which is sad because I would love to have that direct access to the MLS. You would probably love it too, uh, but we're not agents and agents guard that pretty closely and so we do not have access. So how do you find out properties that are for sale? Uh, well, let me go give you a number of websites. Now, keep in mind that websites change. I'm recording this here uh, in the beginning of May 2015. If you're watching this or listening to it in the future, websites change, people go to business, new ones come up. Uh, So just keep that in mind. But these are my favorite. I'm going to give you my favorite websites to look for. Number one, I really enjoy redfin.com. Redfin.com. Uh, it works really well. They're actually a Seattle based company. I live out here in Western Washington. So I think they're just a little better in this part of the country than they are maybe in other parts. Maybe not. I honestly don't know. Maybe they're awesome everywhere. Uh, but I really like them in that they have like not just the best design, uh, but also they seem to have the best information of what I need and, and a good search functionality. So Redfin, R E D F I N.com. Uh, I should probably say this too. Not all of these are good in every location. So some are better, some are worse in other states or whatever. So yours might be totally different. Uh, number two, I often use realtor.com, R E A L T O R, realtor.com. Uh, that is, uh, I'd say, yeah, I probably use it just as much, maybe a little bit less than Redfin, but I, I like realtor.com a lot too. I think, th- I mean, all these are fine. They all have really good information, but I-, I like realtor a lot. They have a good search functionality as well and very pretty design. Uh, Zillow and Trulia, those are also good sites. They don't work as well. Well, in my area, uh, they, they don't, I mean, like in my town, there's, you know, 30 properties for sale. When I go on Zillow, there's only like seven listed. So they must not have a good agreement with my local MLS. Uh, but in your area, that might be great. Now, Zillow also has some cool stuff like the Zestimates, which are probably not that helpful for you, but they kind of give you an estimate of what prices are worth. But what's really cool about Zillow is that they give you, uh, like uh, sold comps. It's easy to use that for like finding out what other properties have sold for. Zillow is really good about that. That's my favorite thing about Zillow. Uh, Trulia is owned by Zillow. They're kind of the same company, so they have similar data, uh, but they're just a little bit different functionality. Uh, And then uh, out here in Washington and in a few other states, there's a website called themlsonline.com. So the 
MLSonline.com. And I like that site a lot too. That was one of the first I ever used out here in Washington. Uh, and I know they're in a lot of states, but that's one of the first I use. And if they're not in your state, they'll just give you a link to like the realtor or another you know listing site will show you. But uh, they just have a nice format and they have a lot of information. They really cover a lot of stuff. So those are the most important websites I use. Now keep in mind, I don't use any of them that much, but I'm not an agent. So how do I get all this data uh, about properties that are for sale? Very easy. I use a real estate agent. That's what they're there for. The beauty of a real estate agent is that they're free for the buyer. Most of the time, you don't pay a thing. The seller pays the agent out of the commission. Uh, you know, the seller pays the commission and they get both your, you know, kind of like your fee and their fee, essentially. Like the seller pays everything. So you don't have to pay your agent to go help you find deals. Uh, so if you can find a good, hungry, solid real estate agent, not literally hungry, but you know, looking for deals, looking to make money, uh, they can be invaluable to you. And so what I do, first of all, I have my agent, we set up automatic alerts for certain terms. So any property in my specific town of Montesano, which is where I live, any property that comes on the market, I instantly get notified. Now, not a lot of properties get listed here. It's like one every week or something. <laughs> but like any new property listed in my little town, I want to know about because I live here and I like to buy properties here. Um, then I have like keyword for like multifamily over my whole, uh, the whole area. Anytime a multifamily comes up on the market, I get an, an email as well. And then that email contains a link to the MLS listing, but I'm not using the real MLS. I mean, it's the real MLS, but it's through my broker's portal. And so the MLS gives their agents the ability to share reports on properties with their clients. And so I get to access all this cool MLS information directly through my agent and I get it in just as fast, if not faster than any of those other sites that I listed. So if you're looking for a property, those other websites are great for cruising around, seeing what you can find, uh, but nothing beats the data that you're going to get directly from your real estate agent. So make sure you build a good, solid relationship with an agent who wants to work with you, who is investor friendly, who understands uh, what you want as a real estate investor. Unless you're a homeowner, then work with a homeowner agent. And uh, you know that that's how you do it. That's how the, that's how you find properties, and then go search on there. All of them have like search uh, capabilities, and so you can kind of narrow down your choice on what you're actually looking for, zip code, number of units, number of bedrooms, uh, price range. Uh, so get you can get very, very specific. And most of those sites that I listed also have automatic alerts as well that you can get automatically alerted about uh, you know new properties that come up on the market. Though I really enjoy my agent's automatic updates because I think they're probably a little more accurate or at least more up to date since they're the original. But who knows? Maybe you'll find different in your market. So with that, we got to get out of here. Today's quote of the day comes from Stephen Covey, who said, I am not a product of my circumstances. I'm a product of my decisions. Again, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. I really like that a lot from Stephen Covey uh, because you know everything that happens to us, people oftentimes think that, you know, I don't know, this person did this to me or this person said this to me or or the market here is not that good or or I don't have any money or my job doesn't this or my boss said this, or my wife said this, my husband said this, whatever. Those are all circumstances, but you are not a product of that. You are a product of what you do with that. Uh, you are a product of your decisions and how you choose that. There have been you know, successful people coming out of every background in the world, probably a lot of successful people from the same background that you come from. So don't use your circumstances as an excuse not to take action. With that, let's get out of here. Remember, in pursuit of your dreams, don't just learn, but take action. My name is Brandon here with the Ask PP Podcast. You can uh, check out other episodes of this show by going to biggerpockets.com slash askbp. And of course, don't forget to leave me a rating or review and subscribe in iTunes if you've not yet. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe there as well. We'll see you around the uh, Bigger Pockets and we'll see you on the next episode. This is Brandon for Bigger Pockets signing off. You've just heard another episode of the Bigger Pockets Ask BP podcast. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets forum by using hashtag AskBP. And for more incredible real estate investing tools and education, including a free download of our book, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing, head over to biggerpockets.com and sign up for your free account today. We'll see you on the next show. You're listening to the Ask BP podcast, and today we're talking about what web... <laughs> what websites? <laughs>